All right. Good afternoon, everyone. If you would, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so the main chamber announcement I have um, is we are looking for folks interested in running for our um, board of directors. The terms are um, a three-year term. It would begin January 1, um, and we have quite a few seats to fill this year. So four seats will be filled by election, and then we will also have appointments made by our incoming president, which is, of course, yet to be determined. Um, if you have any interest or if you know someone or you have a friend who might be a business owner or involved in a business, um, it doesn't have to be a business owner or the manager. It can be someone younger or up and coming in your organization or company that you'd like to see get involved. But we really need people to put their names forward. Um, we have several incumbents that are going to be running and I've gotten one other name. So I really don't want to have an uncontested election again like we did last year. So um, no one likes uncontested elections. Um, it's a really great opportunity. The chamber, um, as a board member, you get tons of networking opportunities that you might not otherwise have. And you also really get a chance to um, have a voice about the types of things that we want the chamber to be involved in and the different issues we want to support. So it's a really cool position. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity. So if you are interested and want some more details, um, I've been intimately involved for quite some time, and you guys are probably sick of me, so we need some new people to get involved. We're not sick of you. <laughs> nope. I feel like one of like the old timers now. I'm like, I've been here so long. Get off my lawn. <laughs> so new, fresh blood is always good. Um, my other um, announcement, not a chamber announcement, is I'm selling raffle tickets for the Ketchikan Campus Advisory Council, of which I am a part. Um, these go towards our goal of endowing a scholarship fund for $25,000, which we use to give scholarships to local students attending University of Alaska Southeast Ketchikan. So I'm just going to pass these around. If you feel so inclined to support our efforts, um, you can go ahead and buy a ticket. And does anyone else in the room have any um, community announcements or anything from your business or organization you'd like to mention? All right, well, we will go ahead now and get right into our forum. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to start off by giving you each two minutes to make an opening statement. And then we have a series of questions that our board of directors put together, and we will ask you each of those. For those, you will also have two minutes to respond, and we'll take turns um, with each of you starting off. So um, Judy will start off. <laughs> Why, thank you. You're welcome. Judy will start off with um, her opening statement, and then uh, Spencer will do our first question, and we'll just kind of roll through it that way and see how much time we have. Um, and you'll have a chance, of course, to make closing statements as well. So um, we'll go ahead and get this started off. Can everybody hear me okay? Use the mic. For the radio, um, for the radio don't the mic. Please use the mic. Oh, okay. So my name is Judy Zingy, and... Um, I'm running for city council again. This would be my third term. Uh, I like being a part of a team, and I'd like to emphasize that we are a team. I am but one voice um, on that team and one vote. The part that I dislike the most is what I'm doing this very minute. <laughs> Campaigning is not something I do well. I want to be a part of this team because I think in the upcoming next three years we have a lot of work to do. Uh, tourism definitely is playing a big part in our economic structure for our community. And there's things that we're going to have to face. Um, the births, the RFP. Um, we also have the hospital issue that is going to be rearing its head here pretty soon. Um, and we've been, I'm part of a committee that's working towards that lease agreement. We just finished the compensation package, although I'm sure that's going to come back. Um, part of being a council member that uh, I enjoy is meeting with the public. I do also work at the mall, so people come in and discuss issues that they have with particular departments. 
And that's the part that I think I'm good at, and that's resolving those issues before they get even bigger and become a problem. Um, and I'm going to ask for your vote. I think I've been doing a pretty good job, and I have 30 <coughs> seconds left. So thank you very much, and I would appreciate your vote. I could use that extra 30 seconds. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> That's not how it works, Spencer. We discussed this. I'll buy it. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, this is Spencer Strasburg. I'm throwing my hat in the ring again here. This is my, uh, I guess, fourth time in like five years. Uh, and I, I don't really consider it a waste of time or a loss or anything when I don't get that seat. Um, it pushes me to, to be a better person. And I found that this is the chance for me to be heard. And um, I think that's what started me running in this was probably some frustration and maybe not understanding everything that's going on. And uh, instead of just being frustrated and posting stuff on social media memes and whatnot, I just started following this game more. And the more I follow this game, the more I'm into it. That's the kind of person I am. I'm a bit obsessive when I get into something. I think now... I, uh, you got my attention, Catch Can. Uh, I'm, I'm really paying close attention to this game, and I think that's why I'll be the best candidate. Judy was right. The economic piece to the tourism is probably the biggest thing that's on our lap right now. And see, it's what's frustrating most people. Um, and that's the thing that I think I can, I can add the most to. Um, it's, I don't have enough time with only one more minute to explain, but uh, I'll just make the claim that I just think differently. Um, I, I did that out of some kind of survival thing um, when I was on the streets of South Florida learning business. Um, the only reason that I, I survived was from watching the games like this all the time, and I have obsessed on it for 35 years. So I've trained my brain to think commercially. Um, I don't really think a lot like um, a consumer, and I think that's kind of the problem with um, our thought going in the future. We need to have a commercial mind and figure out how to do business with these guys. They're making tons of money, and we haven't figured out how to make money from this industry yet. I want to lead in that direction. I, I know I can. I'm looking for your vote. Ready? Ready. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Um, it seems like I've come here a lot over the years. Um, I'm running again, which I say every couple of years, it seems like. Um, you know, I've spent um, many a year on the council and many on the mayor, and, um, you know, it's something that I enjoy doing. That's why I do it. It's something that I think I've been called to do, and it's um, something that I want to do for the community because we always want to make where we live, and not only myself, but family, grandkids and everything, a good place to live and have um, a great life. Um, right now, the big thing on tap is, you know, the docks. The ports. You know, we're talking about a concession contract, preferred berthing, um, do it ourselves, do nothing. And then there's even another one, you know, I, was, I thought about, and as I watched that Juno um, bidding the other day for a piece of property, I think it went for $20 million by Norwegian. You know, another thing we could also do is sell our port. And I know I've talked to some people about it who thought that was pretty nuts, but, you know, um, selling our port would probably bring in a couple hundred million. And we won't have to worry about any of the problems of dealing with the port anymore. We'll have the money that people um, are concerned that we want from the industry. Um, you know, Global Port Holdings is one of the ones interested in um, our port project. You know, they were involved with the Skagway Railroad and port project up there. They put in a bid for $300 million and it got turned down. Um, so that's another option I think I'll be bringing up to the table. You know, maybe we want to get out of this, have um, a port company run it, own it, and um, we take our couple hundred million and um, do our own catch can perm fund, do projects. Um, but it seems to be such a tough question and a lot of arguing over it. Um, I think it's another option. So I'm going to be throwing out new things, and we'll see where we go for the future. And um, always for the better at catch can is where we want to go. Thank you. Thank you. Our technical difficulties. The call dropped. The call dropped, but we're good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, our first question, we'll let Spencer take this one first, and you'll have two minutes again. Um, and this is a fairly open question. The next couple will be. What do you see as the greatest opportunity available to the city right now, and what would your plans be for pursuing this opportunity? Uh, 
Um, well, that's such a broad question. Greatest opportunity. I just want to focus on the media opportunities, uh, most of the ones that we already have had here. I don't know about the greatest or anything. I think we can go backwards and we can really examine what we've been doing. The fact that we didn't raise those port fees from 91 until now is huge. Six million dollars a year, we're going to double those fees. We got to find out where we made that mistake. That's the first thing. If I'm in a business, I'm not just going to go on and say, okay, hey man, uh, go ahead and raise the, raise the profit margin on that. I guess we messed up somewhere. I'm going to go back and look at that. I'm going to get my manager. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to find out what department is in charge of those margins. Who was in charge of looking at that? Why haven't we looked at it since 91? It's one of the biggest fees that we could have been taking in from the biggest industry. But yet we haven't been competitive at all. We've been giving it away this entire time. There's a function in our business here that's broken. We've got to go back. We've got to find out what where that is, we take accountability for how did we make that mistake, and then we make sure we're not making that mistake in other areas, and we certainly don't make that one again. I know we're making another mistake in the exact same area and not collecting a sales tax. I asked Carl myself, why didn't we, why haven't we collected the sales tax? I was the guy saying, let's get the birth ports with somebody else's money, and all of a sudden, last year, these guys went running for us. I said, oh, that's why I want to be heard up here. Um, but. Now, I said sales tax again, too. Nobody comes into town and does business here, and we don't charge them sales tax. And our borough exempted those guys a long time ago. Not one person's given me an answer on why. And we need to collect that sales tax. That's more lost revenue. If we just started focusing on collecting the revenue that we're due, we would make a huge difference in our economic stuff. We don't have to look at it for no grand opportunity. Just start collecting the money we're owed. Your turn, Lou. Same question? Same question. Um, the, well, the biggest opportunity right now is deciding what we're going to do on the docks and that tourism industry for Ketchikan, how it's going to impact us, um, how much do we want it to impact us, how much do we want to have in the community. Um, you know, the industry brings in tons of sales tax. You know, when I started on the council in 87, the mill rate was 9.2, and we're at 6.4 now because we pump all that sales tax, a lot of it into the budget. So. You know, we're not raising the property tax on the locals. We're having the people that come to town and spend their money here pay for a lot of the um, services. So um, where we want to go, I um, really hope that we update our port to handle the bigger ships so we're available for those coming to town. Um, how much is too many? I don't know. I um, We'll have to just see how it comes in and how it affects us. We've got some upland projects we want to do. Um, you know, as soon as they took down the barriers this summer, you know, the congestion alleviated profusely down there, especially on Mondays and Fridays. And um, so I don't know if 13,400 is too many or not. I, um, but I know we have to provide, um, if we want to stay in this industry, we're going to have to provide the dock that um, will, you know, take a 1,150-foot ship. Right now we're at um, 1050. So we need to come up um, and make a final decision. It's been tough. As you can see from the council, we have none of us have, um, there is no majority on how we want to do it. And everybody has a different plan, but that's the job, and it's, um, we are on the council board, and I can't wait to um, you know, sit down with the information that all comes in, especially on RFP, and um, see what would be best and, um, for the community and go with it. Thank you. So I think our biggest opportunity, of course, is the births, but we tend to always move on to the next thing before we have what we have existing working better for us. That makes zero sense. But we have right now an opportunity to fix our hospital or at least make it work better for our community. Um, I think we need to focus on those things. We need to focus on what we have and, and make sure that that's working in the best possible way that it can for us. So I've been meeting with downtown merchants, for example, and they've brought up different ideas that they have on how we can do a better job of welcoming our guests. So it's nice if we get these birds built out. That'll be wonderful if we get more tourists, but how are we gonna receive those people? And I think that that is really key if we're gonna grow here, because as you walk around, if you really are paying it attention to what people are saying, not everybody's happy with how we do it. I spent the last couple of weekends walking around downtown taking pictures of, of what I see. And um, 
most of those were dirty streets and dirty corners and you know, it's nice if we go out and we build all this stuff up, but if we don't have the manpower to maintain that, to keep it clean, um, to the safety, security, fire, we need to have those things in place. So as much as I support new births and new docks and more tourists, I support more the infrastructure that's going to make that possible for us because without that, we're not, we're not doing ourselves any favors. Thank you. This next question is fairly open as well, and Lou will get this one first. So from hydroelectric generation capacity to aging infrastructure, the hospital issues, the city has a lot of challenges facing it also. Um, what do you identify as the greatest challenge, and what would you bring to the table in tackling that? <laughs> Give me two minutes to Go think of it. <laughs> Um, I think our greatest challenge right now is to get some rainfall. Um, it would heal a lot of things if it, um, we had some rain in the um, dams. I mean, our dams are in good shape. Um, the wires carrying all the electricity between here, Wrangell, and Petersburg and us are in great shape. Um, infrastructure, it's always something you deal with, and we'll uh, continue to um, deal with them as we go. You know, it's, um, you know, we used to go through and check all the sewer, you know, for years. So we went through and got the equipment to check all the sewers and did a lot of sewer work. We've had some water, main water issues there, and we'll um, fix up those. We bond for them a lot of those things because um, one of the things when I got out of the council, I, the philosophy of the um, city and the KPU was to you know, raise rates and ca buy ca get, collect cash and pay for everything in cash, and one of the first things we did is um, lowered rates and went to bonding so the people that use those, um, that infrastructure paid for it over time. And, um, <coughs> And we'll do that again. We have a um, proposition on the ballot in October for some pipe work, and we'll um, continue to do those. I um, I see just infrastructure since um, the last time I was on the council is you know the main thing. You know, other than uh, um, you know we already took care of the hospital. We we're talking docks, but infrastructure is always the main thing. Now it's not um, you know the sparkly or shinier thing, but they have to be done. And um, it's pretty basic. Um, there's nothing, um, what do you call it, uh, sexy about it. You just have to take care of it as it comes up. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, Judy, you'll have that question next. Infrastructure. Um, I just think we need to find a better way to address this. Where Right now, it's all emergency. Something breaks, we go fix it. Um, I'd like to see us do a better job of organizing a calendar, how we're going to start paying for that stuff, having a plan. Um, the one thing that, and, I, and I'm sure that the folks that work for us do their very best, but maybe there's something else out there that we can help them with so that we do a better job, because I, I really don't believe right now we're on top of that. I think that maintenance seems to be sort of the last on our list and really it should be the first and we should have a plan for that and we don't. Um, the other thing is our hospital. We have an opportunity right now to um, make that work better for us and I'm, I'm very concerned that we're not doing that. That I do believe that every employee at our hospital um, works very hard and, and believes in our community but I'm, I have concerns about the organization as a whole not the people that are here in Ketchikan. And I'd like to see us figure a way that we can work better together. I'll get started earlier. I wish I had 20 minutes for this one. I think both of these guys were hit it right on the head. And they hit it on the head. My, my biggest one's power. That's it. We're in a power crisis right now. I don't have the answer for that. But I, what I would do if I had any problem like that in my business, um, the first thing I would do, especially if I didn't have the answer, is I would begin to operate differently. I think that's where you start to make the difference. I don't see anybody. Uh, uh, I don't see anybody in a power crisis. I don't see anybody saying, "Hey, man, we got a power crisis." They're not acting like it. 
when I say that, if I get to that city council seat, let me tell you exactly how I'd act differently. The first thing I would do is I would say, hey, we're in a power crisis, and what we need now is data, and I want everybody to act like we're in a power crisis. Carl, what I need from you is I need you to come in here every meeting and tell us how many more gallons of diesel we've put in them generators. And then I need somebody, you know what, you get somebody else, and you tell, you tell us how much are we, are we paying to, like, move them nine times this year, and how much do we pay for the fences, and how much do we, all that stuff. Like, it's like 1.3 million we've paid to move them and rent them, and then... I asked Carl one day on the way into work when I saw him in the parking lot, hey, how many gallons do we put in there? And this was a couple months ago, so I don't really know. But he, at that time, he kind of said, I don't know. And that was my first alarm. I said, man, i got to have a manager that knows his numbers. That's number one. And so I kind of thought, man, all right. And then he said, hey, it's some, I think maybe between six and seven million. And then I started kind of doing the math. God, there's 8,500 of us on just not households and stuff, so I spread that around. And so I really got into this whole surcharge thing, and what I'm realizing is we're not paying the surcharge off before, and it's piling up. We're, I asked the lady at the KPU the other day, like, how, how many cents is this? And it's like 6.4, and she said, but it's going down. And I said, no, it's not, because it was like six. And then she looked back, and she went, oh, my God, you're right. But the paper said it was going down. I said, I don't know, man, we're confused, but we need to act like we're in a crisis and we can fix it. We need to stop paying SEEP at 8.6 cents per any kilowatt. We need to change that deal that we don't get. You know, it stops us from going and finding power any other alternative way, and we're burning it the worst possible way. Dirty, fuel, something bad. <laughs> That's all I got in 20 minutes worth. <laughs> all right. <coughs> Next question, we will start back with Judy. Um, what opportunities do you see for the city and borough to increase their cooperation to see projects achieved in our area? What opportunities do I see? Well, I think we've got that. I don't know. Do you want to ask me that again? <laughs> yeah. What opportunities do you see for the city and borough to increase their cooperation to see projects achieved in our area? I'm not really sure how to answer that question. I mean, we do have our cooperative relations committee that uh, meets when there's projects. I think that uh, there has been talk of the fire departments working closer together. Um, I would like to see us maybe work a little closer together to help private business get some stuff done. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. I'll take that time. I can answer that one. Uh, <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to get together and we need to figure out how to work with the cruise ships. You see, they know how to make money here. And I think if we start looking down that road, we're going to figure it out. So let me try to see if I can't do this. Um, uh, Carnival Cruise Corp. in the second quarter posted nearly half billion dollar profits. And that was pretty good. But uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines posted a record-breaking nearly quarter of a billion dollar profits in the second quarter. And they attributed that to putting adding the uh, bliss and the... And the um, joy to the North American route, which that, that's us. So somehow those guys figured out how to make like three quarters of a billion dollars in profit in one quarter between two of those guys out there. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should just like have them run our docks. We could probably make money. I, this is what we need to start the way out. But this is the kind of research that we need to do. Those guys know how to make money here. And what we need to do is change our attitude about we own everything and it's our responsibility to provide it. It's kind of like those um, crossing guards out there. Each one of those costs us 20 grand a year, right? What, did we need those crossing guards before these guys came along? Heck no. But we aren't asking them to pony up for their portion. So that's why their billions are so high. If we got them to partner with us and say, come on, man, that's yours. We have needs of 8,500 people that live here year-round. You have needs of 1.3 million half the year. Some guy can do math formula, come up with a percentage, and then I go, okay, man, I got like 7%. You got 93. You pony up your portion, and we'll do it. And then we don't have to get that bond that Lou was talking about for the water because it's for everybody. We're all using this place. I don't own anything. It's not my responsibility. It's ours because we share this place, and they're here making money just like I'm down there making money. Everybody start to share this responsibility. If we change how we view it, and we don't own this place. If I owned it, I could have gotten rid of jewelers if I hated them a long time ago, but I don't, so I can't kick them out. 
I guess I don't own anything after all. It's not my responsibility. It's my responsibility to go to those guys and ask for a fair deal and for all of us to pony up our share and for the local not to pay for all of this expansion on his back for 1.3 million people. This is ridiculous. I know, I ran over, but I can't stop. Time. <laughs> well, I think Carnival Cruise Line would love to um, own our port. Um, that's what they took over up there in Skagway. This is what started all this stuff with Norwegian and everything. Um, the crossing guards are paid for by the um, head tax, um, not by the locals. And then back to this city and borough, I think the city and borough um, have worked well together. Um, the community co the cooperative committee has been worked well on different issues. Um, they've talked it over and we dealt with it. Um, the latest was that um, tax on the, um, upping the sales tax portion on um, over 1,000. Um, so it's and nothing major is really coming up between us. Um, we do have um, the planning commission uh, added some money to it. Is our the planning department's going to be doing a um, tourism study? Um, so it's been um, pretty mellow between the two bodies, um, unless somebody over in the borough isn't telling me something. Um, and I was over at the manager's office um, delivering a lost wallet yesterday, and nobody had, had a problem. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, this next question. Now that it's been in existence for a while, do you see the cannabis industry in Ketchikan as a positive or negative to the city? And do you believe the cannabis tax revenue is currently being utilized by the city in the appropriate way, or are there other opportunities there we are missing? And Spencer, this will be yours first. Well, I think they've actually done a really good job of proving some responsibility here. I think everybody thought they were going to come out. I remember Sam Bergeron calling them all zombies and stuff in the, in the beginning. So I think they've done a good job of, of proving some responsibility there. Um, I see a whole lot more troubles in the alcohol industry, and we were going to um, tax and regulate this like alcohol. So I think they've done a, a stellar job of standing up. I don't see a lot of tickets, and I don't see a lot of problems from the locals. One of the biggest problems is I see political hold back. Um, we had a majority of our people vote for this industry as they have across America and there's just holdups in it. It's like putting this out for uh, a vote on on-site consumption. We've already voted several times and in a majority we've all shown support for this. It's a waste of our time and energy to put this issue in there for the voter again. I mean, let's just support it finally. I can't see like putting an on-site place um, could be worse than providing no place at all. You know, I mean, we have some way to control and regulate it then, so it's just a good idea. Um, I, I do think that it's really important, but this power thing, you know, I don't think those, those businesses will really stand to, um, to be in business here if the cost of the kilowatt is going up and the price of their product is going down all the time. There's something going to give, and we're going to lose those guys if we don't figure something out. Um, I, I wanted to propose another tax. I got like one minute, and, but I wanted to say, you know, everybody says, "Gosh, we got to raise this tax cap like that." That was that was just devastating to the business owner here. Um, but we haven't touched that for a reason. You're talking single line of purchases come off that boat. You're talking a really small margin. But you're talking about the business person or the homeowner here that has to buy a Toyo stove that falls right in there. How the borough could stand there and say, I don't think this is going to hurt the local very much, but it's really going to affect that tourist was just such a miss sight. Um, but there's another kind of tax. I want a fish box tax because we don't have a a salmon derby anymore. Our families go further and further to get food. But as we're, we're loading all these resources up, and I see Time. boxes in there. That's good. I'll, do, I'll do that one later. <laughs> box tax. Fish yeah, box yeah. tax. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, we do. Huh? I, like I guess um, on the canvas, it's about to go up really good because I never hear about it or see about it or have any complaints about it. Um, so it must be going uh, smooth. The um, I mean, I'm not even sure what the Tax, the sales tax revenue off it has been, I haven't asked about that in a while, but um, I haven't heard any complaints, so, and nobody's been complaining to me, and none of the um, owners have been uh, complaining, so it's, and everything seems to be going smooth, and um, through the council processes, everything's been going smooth. And Judy. It is what it is. It's here. Um, I think we use the money appropriately. Uh, right now it's designated to help the homeless programs that we have. We've been doing that. It's been helping us. Um, and I think we're fine with it. The sky didn't fall. Um, there, haven't been, there haven't been any um, problems that I'm aware of. Um, and that's it. We'll see what happens on the ballot. And 
move forward. All right, so um, our last question that we had prepared was actually about tourism, which I feel like has been fairly well covered, and you will have more time to address that in your closing statements, um, as well as other possible tax options. So I actually want to make an executive decision and open it up to the floor. Um, I think we can do like two questions. So first come, first serve. And I will bring you the mic. I don't need one. All kinds of topics I want to go for. Something that I remember, because I'm old, but I remember when we passed this marijuana thing in town, it was supposed to be 5% of the money, I believe it started at 5%, it might have gone to 10%, it was supposed to go to the children. Remember the children? Well, I don't think that money's been used anywhere like that. It was supposed to be for the education of the poor children who wouldn't be able to smoke marijuana until they were 21. And I believe there was a separate deal for the borough that was for the city. But there ain't nothing been spent on that money. And there is, I don't know the amounts, but I'm guessing $300,000, $400,000 in a big pile in cash that's sitting there waiting for someone to take their 5 or 10%. This needs to be used. The other thing is the power. Spencer's very right. We need to get something else other than hydroelectric here, whether it's fans, big world, world, whatever you call them, or tidal stuff that we talked about one time years and years ago, but it's so expensive. But we wouldn't be using generators that are costing us a million bucks a day. I'm so, I don't have any questions. Like, are you running? Are you running? <laughs> Get a seat ready for him here. Yeah, right. Right. Extra, that's, what, that's what these Thank extra you. seats are for. Will you please come up here to the microphone just for the benefit of the people who will be listening on the radio? Okay. I'll try to meet you halfway here. It's okay. And I'll stand next to the uh, secondary color here. <laughs> uh, 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 my question is twofold. First one is an easy answer, the second one is the heart of the question. It's been brought up by residents that uh, there should be a plan B uh, should the uh, RFP going out there with flexibility uh, for either concession or preferential not be something that we can work with. That plan B is being researched in order to follow through with an alternative. That said, what is the process or what is the um, where, is, where are we with the RFP? Has it been written? Has it been sent out? Are we in the process of collecting applicants? Question number one. But number two, if not, is there time to add an amendment to that RFP that says, we are simply looking for a dock construction company to give us a bid for simply doing the births according to whatever specifications are out there so that we have a good raw number to work with based on trying to find uh, financing, financing on it by ourselves and not clutter the issue with a lot of built-in costs done by the cruise ship companies. Thank you. I think this is your question, yep. Um, let's begin. The RFP is just one of the options. The RFP gives us an option to look at a concession um, or if somebody comes in and operates the port, gives us so much money. They, or we can get a preferred berthing. But there's other options. There's still the option of, you know, we could do it ourselves. And there's, you know, everything brings up a fight. And then, you know, management says, well, you'd have the bond and we wouldn't get a bond through. But, you know, we can also raise rates and um, collect money for um, a couple of years and build it ourselves, depending on what um, style we want to do. We can do nothing. We can sell the whole port. And... Um, Somebody will probably come up with a plan B or C. Um, all these are just ideas. None of it's in stone. And that's why I've stopped arguing over what we're going to do until everything gets in. Um, our consultant will be back, I think, on the 10th of October. And hopefully we'll finalize the RFP then. And then it'll be sent out. And we'll have to wait, I don't know if it's 30 days or 45 days, for people to bring stuff back in. Then it's all going to be brought before us again. And we can decide and argue and um, see which direction we want to go. Do we want to... Um, you know, there's some of us that are concerned about the concession giving away too much, but um, and others um, have problems with uh, preferred birthing. 
Others say it's impossible to build ourselves. So it's going to be interesting. But that's the main thing is just get all the information in and out to the public and everybody so we can um, make a community decision on where we want to go. So it will be interesting. It's going to be fun. <coughs> Judy, what are your thoughts on a possible plan B? Plan B? I think we've talked about this, Mary, and like I said, I think everything's on the table. Um, like Lou said, our consultant's coming back. We'll see what he brings back. Um, we'll still have an opportunity to decide what we want to do. This uh, first time I've heard Lou talk about selling all our ports. Um, I thought that would be something to do. <laughs> I was like, great, Lou, we need more controversy. Thank you very much. <laughs> the phone will start ringing. Call the Daily News. Um, but there, it's, it's true, though. Everything is on the table. All ideas are on the table. And um, I think this is kind of an exciting, important time for us here in Ketchikan and, and it's worth looking at all the ideas so when that time comes we'll be ready to look at something else if you bring something or send it to the council I'm sure we'll look at it <clears throat> I got a pretty good view um, sitting down there in the front front row um, I, I feel it every day I feel the change and the stuff and I guess I got two different perspectives. I kind of have a business perspective. I also have my personal perspective, um, and they they conflict a little. I want to see, you know, ten billion people for my business stuff, and for my <coughs> personal reasons, I want to see like a population of five thousand. And so that's where the balance comes in. And uh, I uh, I'll be the first person to say with a business downtown, it's okay if some big boats are moving right now. It creates uncertainty for my business. Um, it was gro big growth, um, and I've been rising up. It feels good and everything, and, and uh, I was a little uh, nervous about uncertainty. Um, then I look at from my, um, my, my residential perspective, um, I, I want to take time in our town to do things um, right. And I think, if, I think this buys us some time to slow down. I liken this to my store, and I feel like we've done a whole lot to the doors and the opening of the store to bring people in. But when, the, when everybody talks about upland development, I just hear this like term, upland development. We haven't moved people. We haven't made people comfortable. We haven't figured these traffic issues. We haven't put more of those people. Uh, Lou pointed out that we twenty twenty uh, twenty thousand dollars a year, right, comes out of your head tax fund, right? The money they gave you, we pay for their uh, crossing guards with, right? So we paid for it. But I'm saying is, we need to have shared responsibility in that so that we can have more at each one of those intersections. So that there, and those are jobs for us. So there's a way that we can prosper from this stuff. But economically, we have to get our stuff together. All right, and I saw one more question from Chuck. You could come up here, please, for the folks on the radio. Thank you. My name is Chuck Poole. I'm a resident of the city and a businessman in Ford Cove. Uh, last council meeting, uh, you council members all voted unanimously to file a nine-page objection to a private enterprise uh, building a dock in uh, Ford Cove. I want to know from you encumbrance if you will vote for reconsideration of that letter to object to building a dock in Ward Cove. I want to point out to you that I'm a private businessman and the people that are that are elected you are private parties. We didn't elect you to take our tax dollars and turn around and compete with us in any business, much less the cruise ship business. You think you're going to get a hundred million dollar bond issue passed to come up with some pipe dream to try to cram another bucket and a half in downtown, you're kidding yourself. You know, you think this this consultant you've hired is going to be the rainmaker? I think you're in for a big disappointment. And I think that was very well illustrated in Juno a couple of days ago when they put out <coughs> the bids for a piece of waterfront property. Norwegian Cruise Lines bid 20 million, Celebrity bid 13 million, City of Juno bid 
4.7 cruise line agencies bid five and Godspeed bid somewhere in between. You know, you can't take our tax dollars from private enterprise and turn around and compete with us. And I've heard that said at several council meetings that I've attended recently that you're in competition with private enterprise and Ward Co. Not on my tax dollar, you're not. So I want to know which one of you guys are going to vote for reconsideration. That's my question. Thank you. I think this is yours first, Judy. Okay. Well, here's what I think. I mean, in a way, we are in competition with them. I'm happy that there's $50 million being put into our community, but we also have to think about the folks downtown and the businesses downtown and help keep them viable. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not going to be reconsidering my vote. I do hope that we're able to work with Ward Cove, and I think that, um, but there's, we can't ignore <coughs> that there's issues. I mean, we just can't. But at the end of the day, I hope we work together to solve it. Uh, I didn't agree with that. Uh that letter to the, uh, I didn't agree that it was really on base, like most of the arguments on there. I really felt like we're, we're crying and complaining, and, and it was about financial loss, right? Some kind of financial loss. Governance, governance of some, is like, hey, they, they moved outside of my jurisdiction. I, I want the Army Corps of Engineers to, it, it was a, in my estimation, it was a terrible letter. I think there was one point that might have been on topic. And what I see here is it's, it's a bully situation. I look at that place out there as Wacker City, and they've been trying to get their feet off the ground for a long time. And uh, we owe it to them to leave them alone. Uh, I heard people say, well, we made a big mess out there, and I don't want them camping on that mess. And I say... I, I don't understand. It's a, such a big mess, you didn't need to clean it up. But now it's too big of a mess for someone else to be on top of. Uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if that is your argument, that's a big mess and it's a big environment, <coughs> then there's probably no better person than to park someone with some really deep pockets on it. It's got an environmentalist tied to it. Sounds like a good solution. Uh, as far as bullying those guys over there, why don't we just stop for a minute and ask ourselves, well, we want Saxman sticking their nose and stuff we do, right? We don't want to just go the other direction, but it's okay for us to bully those guys out there. No, I want us to stop with this us and them and stop with the discrimination and the bully stuff. This bully tax on tobacco, it was completely, they, they, they stole money from those people for two years. I told them they were stealing it. And they finally changed their laws, but never said anything about giving that money back. And they're putting it out for ratification from you guys now. It's a bully tax. There's no control over it. They can't control the Time. marketplace. People can beat me when I'm being Time. an honest guy. Vote that stuff down, man. We're, we, there's good taxes we can get out here. Time. That fish box tax. Let's get that one. <laughs> and sir. Um, I think the council and the management has addressed uh, some issues. The main issue that I have is the transportation issue. They have to come up with a transportation plan before they come into the city. Um, you know, SICK right now has a private berth, and they run people on the half hour into town and back, and they're using 15 buses. And um, we have to have something that's planned so we have, know how to um, handle such a thing. You know, we could buy the Talbot's property, knock out the warehouse, work with Steve Adoring and put up where we could do some uh, transportation in there, or they could do it and spend their money. I noticed they came up with $12 million for the Juno property. Um, so all we want is a plan. They put out a nine-page thing that talked about what they'd like to do, but at the very end, the last page, it really said nothing. Um, they have to, and I hope they do find something that where they can come in, bring people, and drop them off, bring them in. They don't want to make it um, probably a long time investment because they want you know they want to develop that area and keep people out there sell tours and that's great, and that's what they should do if, um, if it makes some money, but right now it's going to impact the city and that impact's going to be great. We can't bring buses in and just drop people and that many buses. You know, we're projecting they're going to need 18 buses to handle what they're doing, um, to come in here and just drop them off in the street and pick them up in the street. So there's got to be a plan, and that's all we're and that's what we're asking. Thank you. 
<laughs> if you want to buy Nancy's place, we better all do right. it before one of those guys does for $20 million. So we're going to go ahead and give you guys all some time for closing statements. We'll give each of you two minutes, and I think we're going to start with Spencer. You guys got me engaged in this game. I put five years into this thing. I'm not doing it for the money. So my last piece is I'm going to be the guy that sets kind of an example for our other leaders. I'm going to give all my money to nonprofit stuff, like especially the rendezvous place and that warming center she was talking about. So for if I get that seat, I don't do it for the money. I do this because you guys got my brain engaged. And every day I research this stuff. I've been researching what NASA is doing with their port development. That's why I was really shocked when Lou said global port holding. I thought I had him on that one. I didn't think one of these council members looked at item number four on that RFP thing that the Ahamil guy was talking about. That was the quickest area that we jumped over. And it was the one on who are we putting that RFP out to. And I was shocked. It stuck in my brain. I don't know why. It, it kept bugging me. And I said, oh, one day I was like, oh, yeah, that's a pretty important piece. I don't know why they didn't explain it. And we should be looking really closely that no, we're not being led into a couple of guys over here. We have to do our homework. We can't just let these guys lead us in. We have to do the research every day. I research this stuff every day. I'm full of it. Stop by my store. You'll, you'll be stuck there for two hours. I'll give you a free cup of coffee, and I'll stand there all morning and talk to you because I just love this stuff. You want to get somebody that's engaged, somebody that really cares about it? This is my passion. You can put me to rest for another year. I'll come here because this is the way I get it out. I sweat. This stuff is frustrating, and it's the way I get it out so I don't do all those stupid social media memes and stuff all year. I just stay quiet, and I just dig facts, and I just hold accountability. I can't wait to talk to some of those borough guys about that failed tobacco tax. Why would you put that out for ratification when every you got rid of a 15% goal? There wasn't a good enough program. We'll just take that money. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I think, Lou, you're next. Again, thank you for having us up here. Um, well, the big thing, you know, as we've been talking about is the docs, and I want you guys to be all involved. We'll get plenty of information in. Um, we would like a lot of um, input from everybody because um, it's going to be where we're going for the next 20 years, and that's why I really wanted to um, continue on the council is to, you know, set a direction, uh, then maybe I'll direct myself off. But uh, thank you for the time again. If you have any questions, always give me a call. Judy, two minutes. <coughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, I enjoy being on the council. I feel I work hard. I do my research. I go out and ask questions. I meet with people. God knows my door is always open to folks coming into the mall to talk to me, and I'm glad that they do for the most part. Um, we do have a lot of issues that are coming up that we need to deal with, and they are serious issues. And I believe that I've proven that I take the time and that I listen to people, so I would ask for your vote for another term. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Anybody wants to stay after, I'm going to do that fish tax explanation, <laughs> but I do it animated like normal. Uh, um, anybody wants to put more time in? Sorry. Before we go ahead and do the Lucky Lunchbox, I wanted to remind you all that next week we are having another chamber lunch. It's on Monday, and it's at Sunny Point Conference Center. And we moved it to Monday because next week is also Southeast Conference in Sitka, and a lot of people running for office um, and who would be interested in attending that forum will be out of town all next week. So Monday, Sunny Point Conference Center, same time, and I believe it is the Borough Assembly Candidates Forum. Jackie, did you have a question? Yeah. Really quick, uh, will you remind everyone how many seats are open for this, and are these the only candidates? Yes, these are the only candidates, and there's two seats open. 